Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Just as a tangent, it's worth noting that there are usages of be, have, and do that are not auxiliary verbs. And um, so let's just take a moment to, to think about that. Um, so for, take, for example, the verb have. We already have looked at the auxiliary have uh, that shows up in perfects, as in um, Calvin has eaten a peanut, Maya has drunk, has drunk too much, Domingo has been dancing. Um, this is different from possessive verb have, which is a main verb. Uh, Calvin has a peanut, Susan has a cold. Those are, those are indicating possession and are main verb. One of the ways we know that this is not an auxiliary is that at least in an American English, um, you cannot do subject auxiliary inversion with main verb have. So you can't say had Colleen an accident. Although in British English, that might be okay. Um, similarly, you cannot put a, a not after main verb have, so you can't say Colleen had not an accident. Um, so the ungrammaticality of these second two sentences, at least in American English, shows us that main verb have uh, is not an auxiliary, it's a verb itself. Um, a similar pattern appears with do. So there's uh, auxiliary do, like Catherine did not do a backflip, um, Calvin did not eat, also the question form, did Catherine do a backflip, and the emphatic form, Catherine did do a backflip. So one of the ways um, we can uh, identify that this is an auxiliary is notice that in at least three of these sentences, there's actually a second do here. Um, then that do is the main verb do. But these other ones are the auxiliary do, the ones that are underlined. We know they're auxiliaries because you can do subject oxid version. Um, you can also um, put, they also appear before negation. Um, contrast this with the verb to do that means to complete or to uh, make. So uh, Catherine did a backflip. In this case, the verb it does not have this dummy interpretation that you find in other cases of do support. Um, it, it has a, a meaning that roughly means complete or, or make. Um, notice that this do cannot do subject oxygen version. You can't say, did Catherine a backflip or Catherine did not a backflip. Um, uh, at least in American English, the second sentence is ungrammatical, and I think in all dialects, Catherine did not a backflip is terrible. So main verb do does not appear before negation and does not undergo subject to oxen version. This tells us that main verb do is a different character altogether. The situation is slightly different with the verb to be. The main verb, uh, there is a usage of main verb be, which we call a copula. Copula means it equates two things together. So, Dane is a doctor, or Jorge was the one, or uh, Jorge was, um, was tall. All of those are cases of a copular verb to be. Um, we also have the auxiliary be that shows up in both passives and um, progressives, as in the first two sentences on this slide. Now, what's different about copular B is it can appear before negation, and it can undergo subject talks inversion. So you can say, is Jane, Dane a doctor? And you can say, Dane is not a doctor. So um, the, the same tests we used for have and do don't work here, but there do seem to be two distinct meanings. There's the meaning um, where it, it's functioning as an auxiliary to mark aspect or voice, and there's the meaning where it's connecting two things together. So we're going to treat these three different categories um, of uh, be, have, and do as main verbs and, can, and use, restrict the use of um, be, have, and do uh, as auxiliaries 
to those cases where they express aspect or voice.